Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode number 13 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis Dahl from Summer Dental Laboratories in Zionsville, Indiana. Hi guys, I'm Barbara Wojan, Night Dental Group, Oldsmar, Florida. We made it to 13, Elvis. Can you believe it? No, I can't. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> and technically, we're in our teenage years now. So yep. it's, ti- it's time to get a little awkward and moody. I think that maybe even <laughs> some hair in some odd places. <laughs> So, yay, we made it to 13. I can't believe it. Absolutely. Next thing you know, we'll we'll be at 14. Who knows? (laughs) I think we have some great interviews coming up around the corner. Yeah, we got some nice stuff lined up. But today, we are back to the second part of the roundtable with Martha Martin, Steve Killian, and Heather Voss. Three of my favorite people. Not to exclude anybody, you know. Uh, uh, anyway. Other than yourself, yeah, oh, I was no, gonna I say, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, don't forget about me. Uh, they get back into advertising and getting new clients. The group gets into the importance of participating in study clubs and going to dental conventions that are geared towards dentists. And Barb, you were just at the Florida Dental Association meeting this weekend, correct? Yes, I was. There was over um, 5,000 dentists and their hygienists and students. Biggest meeting that I've literally ever been to involving dentists. It was was unbelievable. A lot of traffic, really cool booths. Everybody was giving out free stuff. They had National Dairy of uh, America there feeding everybody macaroni and cheese and milk. And it was just really cool. I mean, Great environment, lots of people, good people. It was awesome. Did Night Dental have a table? Yeah, one of the only a couple labs that had a table. Um, Glidewell was there. They came over and said hello. And um, a couple other labs that are local here. But the, the majority of them were, you know, selling directly to dentists. They had LED lights and massage chairs and, you know, just all kinds of bizarre stuff that uh, I guess feeds right into that. It was cool. So did you work the night dental table or did you do what Steve Killian does and hires personable people? Not that you're not personable, of course. <laughs> uh, I have um, two of my team members with me and my and I actually did. Yeah, I, I hung out the booth for a long time, met a lot of clients, um, sold a lot of product, gave a lot of fee guides out. Also um, had the Florida Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry and was promoting that as well at my booth because that meeting's coming up in August and I'm on the board. So, um, yeah, it was a it was a long two days, but I enjoyed it. Did you raffle off a motorcycle while you were there? No, we raffled off a $100 gift certificate, a $75 gift certificate, and a 50 So we, we definitely were giving something away. I'm going to win the bike, so don't don't Yeah, don't d- yeah it doesn't matter. Yeah, not worried <laughs> at all. What were the gift certificates for? American Express. Money. Ooh, yeah. My favorite type, a gift that doesn't tell you where you have to spend it. That's my favorite. Bingo. Me too. (laughs) All right, let's get back into the round table. Again, advertising and getting new clients. Enjoy. King Arthur had his knights. Captain America has his Avengers. And dentists have their laboratories. These unique individuals have gathered together to entertain and enlighten all who dare to sit down at the round table and listen to the voices from the bench. With them every now and again. Well, yes, and then it gives an opportunity for our clients and anybody who wants to see Killian, you know, that we're real people and maybe they want to want to meet us. You know, and on Facebook, sometimes I know I know a lot of people see it because they may not make actual comments, but they will call up the staff and say, oh, we saw that you guys did this or you guys were doing that. So it does go on their news feed. So they are seeing it. And I'm sure it does a lot of damage not posting for a while. So if someone does go to your Facebook page and see you haven't done anything for a year and a half, I'm sure that just as dangerous, of, if not more, than not doing anything at all. Yeah, that's. Hey, Elvis, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, those of you who are using Facebook and Instagram, how do you check the likes and comments? How are you, how are you checking up on your you know the success of your your postings? Are are you how do you look it up? I I don't know. I'm not doing it myself. So how do you look back and see who's looking at your your posts? Our marketing coordinator is constantly reviewing it. You know, she checks to see what comments or what post, and then she'll respond if 
there needs to be a response. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, if you, whoever's running the, the page as the admin, you know, when you log in to post anything, it, it'll give you analytics and it will tell you so many new posts and whatever. It'll give you the percentage up and down. It'll tell you how many engagements, how many interactions, how many previews. Um, it's got a pretty good analytic um, dashboard for you to be able to monitor that. Nice. Thanks, Heather. On LinkedIn, if you make a post and then a couple of people take it and share it, I mean, I've had way over a thousand views on some of the posts. So, and I think that's pretty significant. I think that's a great number. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. But don't stop. You've got to be consistent. Yeah, and especially too, now that they've changed, they keep changing the algorithms. I mean, for all the people that are on your page, I think it's something like only 20% actually see your posts because they're really trying to push you to purchasing their Facebook advertising. So you have to be really consistent and pretty uh, pretty voracious to get any real traction in Facebook. Well, the Facebook advertising is very inexpensive. We've done that a couple it of times. It is. But I thought I never would quit seeing that ad come up. It seemed like it was everywhere for a month. But the other thing I want, the study clubs, you know, we've been doing a Spear study club. We've had one that we've hosted for five years. We're going into our sixth year. And those have been extremely beneficial. And I wouldn't say necessarily, well, obviously some of our top clients are in that study club. But we have our prostodontists, we have our specialists um, that are in it too. And just the referral factor from them, bringing the dentist into our laboratory once a month, and we provide the food for them, they love it. And so it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work on me and then my assistant getting everything ready. But the dentists love it. And every year they open up more and more and engage with, with each other more and more. And it's just been, it's been a great avenue for us. So are these spear study clubs or are these study clubs that you're putting the content together yourself? Well, the one I was just referring to is just spear, the content from Okay. So Matt is the leader, and then we use the content from Spear, but then he adds additional things to it. They might do case reviews, or a doctor will bring in a case for treatment planning that the whole group will discuss, and we have a big screen TV in the break room, and they just love it. Oh, sure. The camaraderie with it, and they just, they're opening up more and more and depending on each other more and more, so it's, it has brought a lot of unity. Yeah, I participate in two different spear study clubs, and I really enjoy just having a more casual atmosphere, being able to not always talk about a specific case I'm working on with a doctor, but being able to, in generalize, talk about cases and stuff. It's really a great thing. Does anybody do study clubs where they make their own content? Um, I don't organize one, but I've spoken at a few of them that are, that look for presenters at their monthly sessions. And it's like anything else, you know, whoever organizes it has to, you know, find a speaker, worry about the venue, the food, the blah, blah, blah. So I think there are pros and cons to both. Spears got some great content. I find sometimes though, with the Spears though, you can run through that content pretty quickly. And sometimes they they do. And then you're kind of like either rehashing the same old stuff or, you know, kind of forcing um, the meeting. For the individual ones, sometimes I think it's really, it's a crapshoot how good the content is every single, you know, depending on how well this, how good the speaker is, you know, how relevant the, the information is. So, yeah, I mean, it's like anything else. Absolutely. Steve, what sort of groups do you have in your study clubs? You said you had them at your lab? Back in the 90s, I realized there was such an opportunity to go to um, specialist study clubs, oral surgeons, periodontists in Southern California. So I put out mailers in five counties, Southern California, and said I was available to speak at your study club about dental laboratory communication when it came to implants and whatnot. And and it was really fun. It's, the mailer didn't work, so I just started calling every office in Southern California. And so I would line myself up with the speaking engagement one night a month. And, and that exposed me to 10 to 20 doctors at a time. 
and that exposed Kelly. And it was, again, it was, if we were lucky, we'd get a client out of that, but it was exposure for Killian, exposure for me personally, exposure for Killian Dental Ceramics. So it was pretty cool. And we've continued to maintain contact with all of those oral surgeons, periodontists, and, and on a kind of an irregular basis, we continue to contact them with education and opportunities for using our laboratory with their GPs. And so more recently, about uh, seven years ago, our Noble Pro Sarah sales team began to realize that Killian was available to help out with study clubs and with our facility here upstairs. We've got room for 40 doctors wow. upstairs. We, they realized that we were an asset for the Noble Pro Sarah sales team, and so we got more involved. And so we have one oral surgeon uh, office that uh, we've teamed up with over the last eight years. And so we're, we're one of the co-sponsors along with Noble BioCare and the surgeon himself. And so we call this uh, uh, Wednesdays with the specialists. And so we bring in a different speaker of a different specialty uh, each month. And I get a chance to speak once a year at that study club about dental laboratory communication stuff in general. Um, and, and it's really fun. And, it, and it's just, again, it's just exposure for Killian. And uh, we enjoy meeting our regular group once a month. That's fun. And slowly but surely, and they are GPs, all of them, slowly but surely, they are coming to Killian for our expertise and our implant work and Cran Bridge work. So it's, it's worked out over the years. But it's, it's, it's an investment in time and energy. Yeah. Sure. That's awesome. Does anybody have a direct salesperson on staff? No, sir. No. Not at the moment. You have in the past, Martha? Yes. We probably had, I would say, 12 years of a direct salesperson, different people. Sure. You know, one worked for us, I think, 10 years. But, you know, it's just not for the dollars spent, the return is not enough. So true. And Yeah, they really got to stay busy. Yeah, everybody's busy and the offices are busy and you feel like you're interrupting them if someone, you know, approaches them. That's the hard part about it. Yeah, we haven't had one here at summer for a couple of years now. And actually, we've picked up business. I think it helped. (laughs) (laughs) People weren't bugging everybody. Right. So once you get the business, once you get someone said, yeah, I'll give you a try, what do you do? Is there a packet that you send out to offices that have price lists and your labels and bags and whatnot or white sheets to feature product? How do you follow up when people are interested in using your lab? Yeah, I definitely have a new client package and it's, you know, it's pretty much, you know, what we normally, you know, everything to get started when sending cases, couple boxes, packing materials, scripts, price list, packing instructions, uh, if it's someone who's going to be doing cosmetic work, I put a little, I have these um, little cosmetic checklist pads so that they can make sure they've got everything in there and just throw it in the case box when they're done. You know, so, you know, little things that just keep your brand in, maybe some pens, some mugs with chocolate in it, um, whatever your little promotional thing is at the time. Um, and then I have just a really nice bag that it goes in uh, that's, you know, branded with, you know, so it's purple because my colors from my company are purple, black, and gray. So um, it stands out. but. Yeah, it's just the girls in the front office like the swag. The doctor really just wants what he needs to send to the case the easiest way. We send out a welcome letter and a new account form, like how they're going to pay for everything. Do they want to be put on credit card or are they going to pay by check? We have a client preference sheet that we send out so we can get their preferences into our computer system. Various marketing material we might send out depending on what, what their first case is. And after that, then we send a welcome email or a direct mail. Or we just have several different contacts that we go through for about four different weeks to follow up. Nice. So if somebody local wants to use you, do you guys prefer to go visit them, sit down, have a talk? with they, what, what's, what's coined as a lunch and learn? I've done that in the past, done lunch and learns. When the business for me going out and speaking to study clubs slowed up, I don't know why that was. I guess I'm a lousy speaker. But um, <laughs> when I started marketing with doing lunch and learns uh, and with, with all on four. So I uh, went and hit up all those same oral surgeon, periodontists doing lunch and learns and, you know, training their staff on all on four procedures. So that was fun for a while. Yes. And so we would bring lunch with us and uh, get the staff together. And I'd have my little PowerPoint on my laptop computer and that was fun. But um, uh, that, that didn't turn into much of anything. And it was a lot of activity with 
very, very, very low return. Again, I, I, maybe I was, I'm a lousy speaker. I don't know what it is, but you know, I've gotten away from going out to see doctors directly. Uh, I am asked to occasionally, uh, and the only time I'll go out now to see a doctor directly, it's not, a, it's never a new doctor. Uh, cause I've been burned so many times being asked to come out to meet new doctors and it's a big time investment. And I, it takes me away from all of the other people here in the laboratory, our technicians, our clients who really I'm on the phone all day long, or I'm working directly with technicians here at the lab. It's, it's not a good place for me to be away from the lab. I'm, I'm more valuable here than going out and, and seeing doctors, but once in a blue moon, if there's a big case and it's a good client, yes, I'll go out and we'll do some treatment planning. We'll do something special together out their chair side or meet a patient chair side. And those are, those are rewarding. That's fun to do that occasionally. Steve, that's the same thing here. Matt typically does not go out unless a client requests it. He's very selective because he's much more valuable in the lab with the technicians and on the phone all day long in case planning. Yes. Typically, we'll go out for large case planning or the doctors come here. We're open on Fridays. We have a lot of doctors come in on Fridays and they do case planning. That's That seems to be the... Uh... Same same thing going on here. We'll we'll see doctors on Fridays occasionally because that's their they don't see patients on Fridays typically, and that's their day to to get their business taken care of. And a lot of time, their business is treatment planning with the lab with the the lab tech. Yes. So yeah, it's fun to see them on Friday. Fridays are very busy around here. They are here as well. Steve, are you in production on Fridays, or are you only around for treatment planning? No, no, I'm I'm doing it all on Friday. So <laughs> I don't know if you remember um, if any. Well, you guys, none of you saw me at uh, LMT Lab Day on Saturday. Friday, I had my right hand man, my left hand man, and my right leg person were all gone on Friday, and I had it seemed like three phones attached to my head, and you know. Uh, about six years, you know, all going in different directions, trying to help people. Oh, wow. It was really busy day. So it was really fun to get over to LMT Lab Day West on Saturday and get away from that mayhem and, and say hi to all my friends over there. So are you going to mention the motorcycle? Should we just get that out of the way now? I, yeah, <laughs> let's just get that out of the way. I'll tell you what, I've had so much fun seeing everybody sitting on that motorcycle. You saw my Facebook posts sitting on that motorcycle and people would gather around and ask me, Steve, did you win the bike? And I go, no, I'm, I'm, you're going to win it for just 25 bucks here. Buy a wrap. Oh, there you go. And it was so much fun. And then when, if it would get slow, cause I was right by the registration uh, desk, if it would get slow, I just talk the horn on the motorcycle. People would turn around and I'd wave and there'd be some friend of mine. I'd wave and I'd wave them on over and we'd get our pictures taken together on sitting on the motorcycle. So it was, awesome. it was really a fun day. Oh. <laughs> Made a lot of new friends that day. Yeah. That sounds like fun. I hate that I wasn't there, but I'm glad. I wish you had been. Yeah, that would have been fun. I wish you had been. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, Martha, since you mentioned it, and we'll probably have to cut this out, but uh, – to edit this out, but you got LMT Lab Day East coming up. I'm that's in the fall, I believe. And, True. and Martha, that's going to be uh, we need some people to go. The motorcycle is going to be there, and we need probably you and Sean Nowak and maybe Gary Yako because you guys missed you weren't at LMT Lab Day West. So you guys should be there doing what I yes. did. And I'll tell you what works is sitting on the motorcycle and waving your friends over to take their picture. You get them engaged, and now you can talk about asking them to buy raffle tickets to enter to win. I love it. I need to get the day, the dates for Lab Day East. It's in September, I think, usually. Well, anyway, if anytime, Elvis, you want to get more involved with, uh, you know, on this webcast with the foundation, uh, that would be awesome to do some plugs for the foundation on your webcast. Oh, yes, it would, for sure. I'm looking to get <laughs> both Shans and Gary. We're supposed to be recording in a couple of weeks for a whole uh, episode just on the foundation so awesome and bennett of course bennett's the biggest fundraiser of all of us you know you may gary's probably number two i'm prob probably number three no maybe barbara's number two and i'm number three somewhere in there so anyway they're good you know, a lot of a lot of people a lot of effort goes into the foundation a lot of fun steve have you ever participated in trade shows yeah, Martha, great question. Yes, we do. We we go once a year to one trade show. So we go to the Yankee Dental Congress every two years, and we go to the California Dental Association here in Anaheim 
that show every two years. So that turns into once a year and we have a booth. We've got an inexpensive, easy to set up booth. It's those roller shade type uh, screens that go up. And then we bring some, uh, you know, like everybody, we bring information and we bring wow. our expertise and we bring a little slideshow, PowerPoint slideshow on our wow. laptop computer that runs. And we uh, also will give away, it used to be uh, an iPad. Now it's, uh, you know, it's an Echo or something like that. Uh, so, uh, and then, and then we uh, more recently, in the last few years, we will get a hostess who is engaging, who looks like the girl next door, who everybody wants to talk to, you know, not somebody who's overly sexy, but somebody who's just uh, fresh-faced, bright, and somebody who just who's got a you know an amazingly magnetic smile and personality, and everybody wants to talk to. Him. So that's who we hire uh, to help us give away the the Echo or the iPad or whatever it is you want to give away. So. Last week, we did the Amazon Echo, which was a huge hit. We had so many people register for it. But this year, I ended up taking my customer service team leader. She's been with us over 20 years. She knows our clients. She knows their staff. She was a huge success. Everybody wanted to come by our booth and speak to her. And we sent out direct mailers ahead of time to the attendees saying that we were going to be there. Come by and say hello. That's awesome. I just, that's, it was that's the way a to do huge it. Success. Great tip. And Matt was there. Matt and I went as well. And of course, technical questions. The doctors always corner him with technical questions, material questions. But our booth was the busiest. And I'm just really proud of the effort that we put in and response that we got this year. Um, the one thing that I will say about these trade shows, and this is a pet peeve of mine. If you're going to do a trade show, it's expensive to purchase the booth. I think the one we just did, the booth itself was $1,300. You know, we've got travel time for four people out of the lab. We've got hotel rooms. We've got meal expense. And then, of course, we're paying people to be there, which everybody else is doing the same thing. But it drives me crazy to walk by a booth and whoever is behind that booth not engaging with the people going by. I mean, right. I set my staff down and said, listen, when people walk by, you engage with them. This is extremely important. That This is the whole purpose that we're there. And they did a yep. phenomenal job. But I will tell Isn't you, great? there was other, other vendors there, maybe some other labs. And if they're sitting there looking at their phone or doing a crossword puzzle or reading a book, if they're on my team and I know that they're doing that, they will not go again. That's not why I'm having them go there. No, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Don't waste your time. You only have a small window to get as much attention as yeah. you can. So we now reduced to just one person. And I'm with you, Martha. We will put our best person who's the most familiar with our clients. So that would be our front office manager. Right. She would go and because she knows them all and wants to meet them all face to face. Yeah. And she's the best. It was either me or her. Now I've got my right-hand man, John Hunsinger. He'll go. But we're finding that those that are on the phone the most with our clients are the most valuable to be there at the booth. And they're the ones most interested in meeting our clients face-to-face -face because they talk to them every day. And it's so much fun for them to do so. Yes. Gloria, she's my team leader. She loved it. And the offices love her, too. They've had a great relationship over the years. And it was just, it was huge. And that's the point. It's probably more important for us to be there at the booth to meet our clients and get our arms around them rather than to make new clients. You know, that's yes. icing on the cake. If you meet somebody new, that's great. But it's more important to meet your clients there face to face and tell them where you are. And please come by the booth so we can say hi. And they love doing that, too. They want to see us. So it's, it's great. Right. Great way to connect. That's another mindset that I think the old mindset was, was if we're going to do a trade show, we have to have so much sales and we have to bring this in. No, you can't think of it that way. You have to look at those trade shows and being there as you are getting in front of your existing clients. And like Elvis said, opening up, yes. there's the old saying, it's a lot easier to keep a client than to get a new client. It's a lot less dollars spent. Yes. So you have to look at it as that's one of the avenues to retain your existing customers. And if you're not there in front of them, Somebody else is. Maintaining the relationship is everything, isn't it, in our business yes. now? That's the most important thing, customer service and relationship. 
relationships, education, just like what you and Heather both have reiterated, it's huge, huge now. And you've got to stay on top of it. Absolutely. There is a lot of years here that I would never left the lab. I was only over the phone communication. And when I finally started going out and visiting offices, getting to meet them face to face, the people I was talking to for years, it was amazing how we were able to connect. Like you, you have a picture in your mind what the people look like. And of course, with a name like mine, Elvis, you can only imagine what most people kind of had in their mind <laughs> should look like. And it's, it's fun to like joke with them and be like, I don't have my, my big sideburns and I don't have the, the shoes or anything, but it's just really great to meet people that you've worked with for a long time. Yes. It's really a joy. It's one of my favorite parts of doing this. Well, and it comes across, it's very genuine and genuine is huge as well right now. Absolutely. Well, let's wrap up for a few things. Let's just talk about a few of these points here, and then uh, then we'll wrap it up because we're coming up on an hour here, and I don't want to take up everybody's time. But um, does anybody offer coupons? Does anybody do them? Do they work? No. 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 And no. It's just not our business model. Nor, nor mine. We tried them. Um, we felt bad about doing it the one time that we did, and we decided, you know, that's not our business model. We're not doing that again. Well, that was an easy one. Uh, we don't need. We don't do it either. I don't. I don't believe in it. Well, excellent. I appreciate everybody joining me today. Hopefully, we uh, were able to provide some tidbits to other labs, so hopefully, they can uh, get a grasp on getting some new clientele and how they can advertise. Thanks, Elvis, for putting this together for all of us, and I'm flattered to be here and love being with these amazing incredibly intelligent women. I'm so uh, <laughs> blessed to have been oh. asked to be amongst them today. So thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Elvis. Yes, thank you, Elvis. Everybody loves you. It's great. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Too bad Barbara had to step away, yes. but from her, thank you, I'm sure. And let's do it again. Let's come up with another topic. Let's, uh, let's do it again. All right. You know, couple months. I'm in. Thanks, Elvis. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you all soon, I hope. Thanks, Elvis. Take care. All right. Again, thank you to the three that joined us for this roundtable. Martha Martin, Steve Killian, Heather Voss. Always enjoy their insight into our industry. And all the good information they were able to provide us and the listeners. I always appreciate their input. We try to load our programs with a lot of information that you can take back and use. So we hope you enjoyed it. Hey, a big shout out real quick to the Oregon Association of Dental Laboratories. They actually put out their quarterly newsletter and gave... Voices from the Bench, a real nice big page. And, you know, that's a top-notch organization. And we're actually looking to get the president of the OADL, along with some other presidents from other states, to talk about their state associations. But again, thank you to the Oregon Association of Dental Laboratories for your support. We appreciate it. We are always looking for new listeners, so please spread the word. Let everybody know. If you love our podcast, tell your friends. If you don't like our podcast, tell your enemies. <laughs> Anywhere podcasts are downloadable, you will find Voices from the Bit. And I think they kicked Elvis off of Facebook last week because he shared it so many times. So share it also. The more the merrier. Apparently, if you spread it to every dental group known on Facebook, once you hit about 30, Facebook says you can't do anything for a week. Wow. So I've been kind of... Uh, behind the scenes on facebook not lying low to post huh? anything <laughs> yeah so yeah if you see us on facebook please spread the word hit share any anything will help we appreciate it yeah thank you email us if you want to be on the show if you got something to say let the industry hear it info at voices from the bench.com join us next week we got an interview that's not only great it's preet see what i did there nice I like the play on words there, bro. I appreciate everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. I just lost everybody.